Welcome to the Elite Podcast Network, home of the number one independent wrestling coverage. Available on iTunes, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and wherever you get your podcasts from. Follow us on Twitter at Elite Podcast Net and join the revolution now. Joined by Oscar and Tom. What's going on, gentlemen? Not much, man. How do I gotta say? R E L A X. Relax. Nah, you're gonna. You said that once, and it completely backfired. And you're not gonna say it twice. So well, you know what? Well, Tom. Well, Tom. <laughs> reference to Billy Gunn. I got two words for you. You know what they are. Whoa, that, that's, and, that's not that is not right. This is a PG show. There are kids listening in, and yo, fuck these kids. <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Come on, now. hey, that's harsh, right there. That that now that that's going over the limit there. Ain't no damn kids listening to this, uh, but um, yeah, uh, guys, before we actually reveal what these two are talking about. Uh, about the relax uh, situation that Oscar's over here talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about this big announcement that Triple H was talking about last week on SmackDown. Um, the big announcement ended up not being a big announcement. He ended up switching shit instead of, you know, announcing that big announcement. So, he changes this by making Daniel Bryan get involved in the match tonight with Seth Rollins, which was great. Probably one of the matches of the night, hands down. Uh, those two, uh, basically one-on-one, and uh, the winner would go on to Fastlane to face Roman Reigns. And the winner of that would go to WrestleMania to face Brock Lesnar. Um, you know, of course, me and probably... Thousands and billions of probably people on the internet were excited for that. So, uh, the matchup, we might as well just talk about that right now uh, and and just get down to the get down. Um, of course, in case, if for those that have been following Seth Rollins and Daniel Bryan, these two, you know, they wrestled in 2013 in Ring of Honor. Uh, probably two of the best Ring of Honor superstars of all time. Um they definitely, you know, put put ROH on the map with a lot of guys. So, uh, but uh, the matchup tonight, uh, I'm gonna just go ahead and go ask both of you guys your thoughts on the matchup and uh, what's your thoughts on this change? Uh, do, do you like it? What do you think is gonna happen um, with uh, you know the new? Uh, the new rules that we have going on for Roman Reigns not going straight to WrestleMania. He has to go through the winner, who was Daniel Bryan. Um, let's start off with you, Mr. Oscar. Since Oscar is the one that says relax. Yeah, um, I think it's good. I, I I am surprised they had to do this again because they learned their lesson last year. The whole, what happened with Batista, and then they blew the shit out of him. I guess they thought they won't blow the shit out of Roman Reigns. Well, they they did. I mean, they should have known this days before the Romo, the Rumble. Sorry, I said that's a Rumble, Rumble. And then, um, yeah, I'm surprised they had to do this yet again. And they, this should have them learn that hey, listen to the fans. You know, 
they said what they want. You know, I I thought it's like, I mean, I mean, back in the day, it was like, hey, it's, it's all about what the fans want. Now it's like they're trying to say, we want you to like Roman Reigns. We want you to like this guy and that guy. We want you to hate the sorrow. That's not going to happen. So, and we also live in a new world. You know, like, we live in a new age. Just social media around. You could read what the fans think. It's not like saying, okay, we we try to act like we don't know what you, what you want, but we're going to make you like this and that. You know, it doesn't work that way. So, I mean, they should not, they should have been in this situation in the first place. So, that's what, that's why you got this bullshit going on again. I know this is not the original plan, but, hey, this is what you got. And if they're smart, you better, you better have Daniel Bryan win this match. And have him go against Brock Lesnar. That's the match that you should have happen. I know this part of this match might not be the greatest match, or look like something that Brock Lesnar could destroy him. But knowing Daniel Bryan, he'll do anything to have a great match with anybody, even if it's Great Kali. He'll try to have a great five star match with Great Kali, even though Great Kali's not even in the roster anymore. But oh well, you know what I'm saying. But um, yeah, Daniel Bryan and Brock will kill it though. I really think they will. And as for Roman Reigns, I don't know, but you know, he's not, I'm sorry, but he he's not ready to be in this level, and we question that all year long, even so, even though the rumor was was going around since, what, the summertime, beginning of summertime, we always question ourselves, if, if, is Roman Reigns ready? And then now, going to February of 2015, the answer is no, he's not ready. I'm sorry, but he's not ready. He's, he, the crowd don't like him. I mean, just, I'm sorry, man, no one don't think he's ready. And they don't feel him like what they felt Cena when he first started. There was a lot of Cena fans there. I'm sure you guys, both of you guys were cheering for Cena at one point when he was a dozen Namish until they switched into this Cena you know, today, whatever. But I'm sorry, Jordan Reigns, you're not ready. And WWE, don't be an idiot. Just put down your Bryan in man. That's best for business. And you don't want... You don't want WrestleMania or the crowd at there in San Francisco to boo the shit Roman Reigns. I'm sorry. But if you want a good reaction, you gotta give you gotta give it to Daniel Bryan. And now I'm gonna go pass the time. Real quick before you let's pass on the time, I just wanna go back and just explain to the folks uh why Daniel Bryan got involved and how he got involved. So before Triple H was about to announce uh the announcement, Roman Reigns comes down, you know, basically crying before the announcement was made. The announcement was never made. So then Dan Bryan comes down and um, says, you know, if you're going to make an announcement, uh, you might as well put me in in the main event at WrestleMania because I never got my rematch. You know, I, I never lost the title, basically. So, And um, Seth Rollins came down, you know, because Seth Rollins basically just had a match with Brock Lesnar and John Cena, and he basically said, you know, he started the show, which he did. And uh, he thought he should be in it. So that's how the host, you know, match got down to the get down. So, uh, But I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it on to Tom. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of figured that WWE, this whole announcement was going to be to try and fix this whole situation with the Rumble. You know, like, like Oscar said, it, it shouldn't have even come to this point that – they had to fix it two years in a row. And who knows if they're even going to fix it because uh, Roman Reigns could end up winning a fast lane and still facing Lesnar at WrestleMania. It could happen because at this point, I feel like WWE doesn't know what the fuck they're doing. And even if when when they do realize what they're doing, I feel like they're going to kind of troll the... Uh, the fans that want to see, you know, Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar or a Shield triple threat match at Mania, something. Just not Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, the origin, original intended match. So just to see something like this, I mean, it's cool to think that maybe you were going to get something different and maybe WWE has changed their minds, but... Like I said, it shouldn't have even come to this point. Like Oscar also said, Roman Reigns isn't even close to being ready uh, to being a main event talent. And it's not helping that 
WWE is just shoving him down our throats. They're doing it worse than they did to John Cena. At least with John Cena, he kind of rose at, as a talent, and the fans were getting behind him naturally um, once he turned face back at Survivor Series 2003 where he joined Team Angle. Ever since then, uh, the fans started getting behind him. Uh, Let's not forget, natural. also, John Cena was U.S. champ before he, you know, went to the main event. Yeah. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can remember watching WrestleMania 20, and when John Cena lifted up the big show for the uh, the FU, what's now known as the AA, that crowd at Madison Square Garden, which everybody knows, Madison Square Garden crowds, uh, you know, throughout the history of wrestling, are known as you know the smarty crowds or the 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 smart wrestling fans crowds. They're always loud. They're always vocal. And they went crazy when John Cena hit that FU. So his his rise to popularity was at least more natural. And even though it's been going on for far too long, I can at least say that he kind of, he did it by himself. You know, he wasn't originally, you know, handpicked to do it. He had a rapping gimmick. I mean, how many guys I'll, can get over with I'll be honest rapping? with you. I used to love John Cena coming down rapping. He used to diss yeah. everybody. He used to come down, um, you know, everybody that he was going against, he used to diss them in a rap. And, like, some of the raps that he had, uh, some of my favorites was when he, you know, dissed Taker, when Taker had the uh, American Badass gimmick, you know. I used to like Cena. Like, Cena's gimmick was pretty, pretty cool. But, you know, of course, you know, once they kind of switched him up a little bit, you know, you don't like him no more, you know. But I, I'm not gonna sit up here and say I, I've, I've hated John Cena, you know, forever, yeah. you know. I, but. I, when John Cena had his whole rapping gimmick, I wasn't. I, I can't say that I was the biggest fan of him. I can't say that I, I really liked the guy, but I could say that I did see um, that he was kind of cool. I just wasn't the biggest uh, John Cena fan ever since he started. And then once they started kind of pushing him as the main guy and wouldn't stop, then that's when it started getting on my nerves. But anyway, this isn't about uh, John Cena because he's not even near the main event of WrestleMania, so uh, I don't care. But to to, to finish this whole thing up, um, like I said, Roman Reigns, he, they need to just build this guy to a natural feel, you know, instead of this thing where people can tell that he's the hand-picked guy and he's being shoved down our throats as, all right, this is the guy you're going to cheer for. You're going to cheer for Roman Reigns. And, you know, you shouldn't cheer for Daniel Bryan or anybody else because Roman Reigns is the guy. And that's ridiculous. And this is what happens when they try to do something like that is they get backlash uh, to this level. And it's funny, because when I, when I looked on Twitter, uh, I believe it was last Monday, somebody made an interesting point. They said, in WWE's kayfabe world, you're supposed to hate Seth Rollins because he's the supposed hand-picked, uh, you know, favorite of the authority. You know, the authority hand-picked Seth Rollins as their guy, as the future of the WWE, and he's supposed to be the biggest heel in the company. So then why would we cheer for Roman Reigns when he's essentially that gimmick, but in real life? It makes no sense. WWE's logic is completely backwards. They just, we'll see what they do um, from here on out. We'll see if they can right the wrong, maybe make WrestleMania more interesting. But said it before, I'm going to say it again. I don't trust them. Um, I'm hoping that we get the right decision at Fast Lane, but always in the pit of my stomach is that WWE is still going to fuck this up. Yeah, I was like that myself. I'm like, ah, even though Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan were going at each other, they might just fuck us in the ass again, you know, because that's what the WWE that's what the WWE does best, you know. But who knows? We will see. Um, I'm hoping Daniel Bryan goes over. You know, it, it will make sense. 
But either way, I still see Daniel Bryan somehow getting in the, in the, in the WrestleMania uh, main event somehow because he still has never lost the WWE title. So it's it, that's going to still be part of a storyline. Yeah. And I actually like that because I think it's one of the few times that we actually had uh, continuity on WWE television. And I was surprised. Usually WWE acts like we're supposed to forget about something that happened a year ago and like it never happened. So the fact that they're continuing with something is actually pretty impressive on their part. Yeah. Um, Right after the announcement, uh, Roman Reigns basically stayed in the rain and... The Big Show comes out again. We see Big Show and Roman Reigns for the I don't know how many of times. Uh, but this time it was a different turnout. Uh, Big Show wins with the help of Seth Rollins and J&J Security. So uh, that happened in that matchup. Which uh, we, we can move on to the next thing that happened on Raw. Curtis Axel comes down. Cutting the promo, basically pissed off, you know, because he never got kicked out the Royal Rumble, never made his his way in the ring. Then Dean Ambrose comes down. Dean Ambrose uh, comes down and he starts beating the shot of Axel and basically throws him out the ring and says, "Now you're kicked out." And then this is where we can actually have a good conversation about what Dean Ambrose is basically starting to feud. Um, he said that week, you know, when Raw was canceled inside the headquarters. He was walking around and saw different pictures of former Intercontinental Champions. Uh, so, uh, from there, basically he said he would like to hold that title too. So, it's looking like we're going to see a Dean Ambrose, Wade Barrett feud. And when I saw him make that comment, I'm like, okay, I like this. And I know, Oscar, you're a big fan of the IC title. Give us... Tell me your thoughts on what what uh, you're looking forward to see with Dean Ambrose and uh, Wade Barrett. Well, hopefully this will lead to a uh, classic rivalry. Like, we can go back and say, hey, this was a good rivalry. Cause that's something with the WWE and the Contail needs. I mean, I just feel like this whole, for the past 2014 year, that um, there's a couple of feuds that should have been in the Contail title feud, like the Dean Ambrose and um, Seth Rollins, you thought it should have been an intercontinental title feud. Even though Seth Rollins was the money in the bank, you just can't say, okay, he's the main eventer, just like that, because he won the money in the bank. Why not give him more success? Why, why not give him a bigger resume? Give him the intercontinental title, you know? And Dean, that will make it more, you know, I can say, like, more prestigious if you put in the race of a guy named, like, Seth Rollins. I just feel like there's some... I just feel like lately it's just been like I'll, I maybe David be creative, but now I just feel like they're just putting the IC title the wrong people, you know, like Big E. Um, I don't know, not not take with him, Dolph, but Dolph Ziggler. Sorry, but he cannot he cannot have a big time feud with that in the contest. I'm sorry, it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> but I don't know. They should start giving the titles to some guy, guys like Bray Wyatt. Dean Ambrose, Seth you know, Rollins. I mean, that's what we're talking about. Dean Ambrose. You know, he yeah. called out Wade Barrett. Yeah. I know. Wade Barrett, he, we've seen him so many times with it, and it's just that just didn't go nowhere. But let's just see. Let's just hope this is a great, a great rivalry coming up. And, and hopefully when Dean Ambrose win it, I just hope they don't fucking put him in stupid views like, or oh, a returning Sheamus, a heel Sheamus, or a, um, a, a returning Bo Dallas. You know, I just don't want to see all that. You got to put him against Seth Rollins or Bray Wyatt again, pretty much. To have something with it for the Intercontinental Hill. I think I'd rather see another fucking. I, don't, I another honestly, set. I don't think. Honestly, I, I think Seth Rollins is not even on an IC level. He's uh, he's in a WWE. Heavyweight Championship title scene. He's that's that title's below him right now. In my book, you can say you can say that, but I just think if you give me that kind of title, that will put a, if you add in this resume, and and if he had it right now, I would probably be happy for it. You know, I just hope to give him a good feud. But um, or hey, I, give it to I, you. 
I get what you're saying, but I don't understand why Seth Rollins is even in the in, the, in this conversation when we're talking about Dean Ambrose feuding with Wade Barrett. I really never got like a a thought of. Did you even see that part or or no? Not really, but I know what you're talking about though. Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, but um, yeah, I mean, like I said, hopefully it's, it's going to be a great feud. We'll see. I don't know if something's going to like me, but. Maybe I'll be happy. Maybe I'll be happy if Dean Ambrose walk out with the title, but who knows what they're gonna do? All right, um, Tom, uh, what's your thoughts on uh, the WWE starting this new feud with uh, Ambrose going after the IC title? Uh, I think it's it's definitely an interesting feud. Um, I think both of those guys could be at the main event level. But I think having them feud with each other isn't bad. The problem with this isn't that they're feuding for the Intercontinental title. It's how much focus is going to actually be put on their feet. Are they actually going to pay attention to it every week on Raw and SmackDown? Are they going to make it feel like it's an important match? Because you could have two great guys feuding with each other, but if you don't make it feel important, then there's no point to it. So it's all up to how WWE is going to be booking this feud. Um, it's definitely weird to think that of, out of all the guys in the shield, that Ambrose is kind of right now out of the world title mix. He's kind of out of the main event mix. Even though Ambrose is still one of the most popular guys on the roster, uh, people still love him, he's just kind of not being booked at the level as uh, Rollins and Reigns right now, and everybody was kind of expecting Ambrose to be, you know, the guy out of all three of them when, uh, you know, before the shield was broken up. But I think, uh, I think for right now it's a good spot for Ambrose. Like I said, they can't, they can't be pushing um, all three shield guys and Daniel Bryan and Dolph Ziggler and all these guys that we would want to see being pushed. You can't push them all at one time. Um, Ambrose is still really young, I think. Uh, he'll he'll definitely kind of get his way uh, back into the world title picture. I think what we'll see Ambrose back uh, kind of in the main event scene is when he really gets that heel push. Once Dean Ambrose becomes a full-fledged heel, um, more of the John Moxley that we got, kind of the, the Dean Ambrose from the FCW days, that's when I think he'll be... Uh, a world title contender once again because I think he's going to take it to a whole another level once he uh, breaks into that character. So yeah. I think I think for right now, um, a feud with Barrett for the IC title is uh, pretty okay. It makes the title feel a little bit more important. And, right. you know, you, you, you look at the IC title uh, right now is Barrett and Ambrose, and then the U.S. title is Cena and Rusev, and the mid-card titles aren't actually looking too bad right now. So I can't really give uh, WWE too much crap of how they're booking the mid-card titles. It's just how you make them look, how you're going to book the feuds. Yeah, I'm definitely with you on that. Uh, it'll definitely make the fans like care about the IC title and the U.S. title again. Um, next matchup, the Ascension, uh, when it gets Stardust and Goldust, um, the match was like a two minute matchup. Uh of course the decision won. But after the match is what was very interesting. Stardust and Goldust uh had a little argument in the rain. And then later on in the back, uh Goldust called Stardust Cody and he was like, Don't you ever call me Cody again and basically, you know, made a sound out sound I don't you know how Goldust does it, his his little sound. And um, it's looking like maybe we'll see a Stardust Goldust feud going, which I'm very with. Uh, I'm definitely with that feud. Uh, I'm pretty sure you guys can agree. We've been waiting for the brothers to go at it for a while when when when, when Stardust was Cody Rose. Yeah. Yeah. I I think so. I think. I don't even, you know, when they brought this whole Stardust thing into uh, into play, I think I think people were kind of intrigued at the idea at first because it was something different. But um, 
the WWE hasn't done anything with it. And you, you compare it to a few years ago when, uh, you know, Cody Rhodes was uh, doing that whole storyline with, uh, you know, with the authority and getting fired and then Goldust coming back. And all that, that storyline put him and Goldust huge. They were over. They were some of the most popular guys of the roster around the 2013 time, that late 2013. Um, and they really didn't do anything with Cody Rhodes or Goldust after that. They just kind of left him hanging around. Hopefully this, you know, leads to uh, Cody Rhodes kind of getting back into the main event level as a heel or a face. I don't think it matters. I think he can play either role pretty well. It's just kind of getting him back up there. And I but it looks, I of it, it looks like he's going to be Stardust still, though. I think, I think once he stops the feud with Goldust, we'll see Stardust go away and we'll see Cody Rhodes come back. That's just my opinion. To Stardust, believe it or not, I think he's more over than Goldust. Yeah, yeah, I would think so because I just I think that Cody Rhodes is more over than Goldust, you know, in itself. Definitely. Uh, did you want to share an opinion on that uh, on the on the brothers probably breaking up? Yeah, uh, but first I want to say, Ascension, keep doing what you're doing. Um, putting up. I mean, well, we could say that would be great if keep putting what the Ascension is doing. Just, just beat these guys and other jobbers, and and hopefully next week they'll just beat the Montanoris and then see what happens with Ascension. But um, going back to the freaking brothers, um, we we heard all the rumors that Goldust is planning to retire, and um, I guess it's probably true. I mean, he probably wants that final match that he always wanted for years. That that. WrestleMania match with his brother, and this might lead to it. And um, well, yeah, we'll see. I guess he's going to say he really wants to hang it up and try have his own brother retire him, and see what 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 Cody would do. Uh, oh, not sorry, Cody. No, oh, Stardust. I know Cody go crazy on me now. <laughs> Stardust. Let's, let's see what Stardust could do without Goldust. What, what could he do so, in a solo way? You know, I mean, I like. Oh, the it's, it's, it's definitely no question on what the guy can do alone. We've seen that. We've seen that. Yeah, we see that like, Cody, Cody Rhodes. What, what, what about Stardust? Are we going to see more rit, rit, Riddler shit? Is he going to give out riddles now? Like, not on his Twitter, but when he's feuding with somebody like John Cena, is he going to give out riddles too, just like the Riddler? You know? that That's what the question we're going to see. This is this is a different character than he was that Pretty Boy char- character. So, we'll see. We've seen Cody Rhodes done other things. We saw him when he supposedly got his face fucked up and he became all psycho out when he wearing a mask. And he had a brilliant feud with Bray Mysterio, which I like. So, um, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. And just time will tell, you know? I'm not sure if this matters. I'm not sure. Once your Twitter is verified, I don't think you can change your Twitter name. But Cody Rhodes' name is now Stardust WWE. Can you change your... Twitter name. I thought, I thought didn't he make a whole new account for that? I, I don't know. He made a whole new account for the star. I, I changed it. I, I think he changed it. I, I don't. I don't think being verified or not doesn't mean anything. Maybe I'm thinking. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm uh, thinking. Thinking a little too much into this, but. Yeah. We'll definitely see uh, what happens but with those two. You know what's crazy, and I always forget about this. Cody Rhodes is still really young. He's like 28, 29 years old. And I think we forget about that because he's been in the WWE for, what, uh, Since seven like years? like probably? Yeah, he, he started out really young in the WWE. And I can remember when he first debuted it, and, you know, he was lined up with Ted DiBiase Jr. Everybody was saying, oh, man, Ted DiBiase Jr. has uh, a way brighter future than Cody Rhodes. Like, Cody Rhodes is going to go nowhere. And, I mean, within only a couple of years, Cody Rhodes uh, was way, way better than Ted DiBiase. He improved so much. And I think I think Cody Rhodes could get back into the main event scene. Like I said, he's still young. Um, WWE knows he's one of the most 
reliable guys on the roster. They know he has talent. Um, so I think it's just a matter of time um, if and when he gets pushed to the title. Definitely, definitely. Um, also, tonight, John Cena came down with the uh, and basically had a, uh, a welcome back for for uh, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, and Eric Rowan. And in the middle of that promo, Stephanie McMahon interrupted, and, uh, you know, Ziggler had something to say about it, and in the middle of that, she basically gave each guy a matchup that night, gave uh, a match for Ryback to go against Luke Harper, and um, Eric Rowan against Rusev, and Ziggler against Bray Wyatt. Now, let's talk about all three matches right now. The Ryback match, Ryback Luke Harper match. That match was actually okay. It was pretty good. It was it was a decent matchup in my book. Um, you know, because Luke Harper, you know, you can have a match with him, and it's going to be a pretty good match, uh, hands down. Um, before I go to that, I just want to say right now, Twitter is exploding because I think Stone Cold Steve Austin went to China and the um. Uh, Podcast. I cannot wait to see that. Oh, I'm to throw it out yeah. there. So yeah, but, uh, well, I think we'll be we'll be mentioning the podcast on our next show on Friday. We'll mention oh, it sure. all because oh, sure. um, if you're looking on Twitter, uh, it's going crazy over the things that Triple H is saying. I have no idea what he said, but I'm. I'm I don't know. Definitely... I don't know the exact thing. I'm gonna have to watch it uh, over again. Um, I know some things, but uh, it'll be it'll be interesting to talk about once we get to it uh, on the next show. Yeah, sorry about that, y'all. But uh, let's talk about this match with Ryback and uh, Luke Harper, which was a pretty good match. Because, uh, you know, usually when you see uh, Ryback in a match, you know, it's not one of the best matches. And I thought it was one of the, one of the best matches of, of the night. Um, Tell me what you guys uh, thought about that match. Give me your thoughts on it. Um, I'm going to go with you, Tom, first. Uh, I thought it was an okay match. Like you said, Luke Harper can go out there with just about anybody and have um, a good match. He's easily one of the best workers and wrestlers in the WWE right now. Um, And, you know, the spot he's in right now isn't really a good one. But I feel like he's going to be in WWE for a while because they know that he's a reliable worker. You know, he puts people over. He puts on good matches. He makes guys look good. So in that sense, I can see him sticking around for a while. I don't know if he'll ever end up in the title picture, but, um, you know, he could he, go, he could go out there with a broomstick and have a pretty good match. So, And, you know, Ryback's not bad, but you don't usually see him putting on good matches, so I didn't really expect much from this. Definitely. Oscar? I'm sorry. I was trying to look at the whole Twitter thing. You were asking about the whole right back match, right? Correct. Okay. Um, all right. Well, going back, uh, I thought that the first um, – when they said that you know, Ryback's going to have an opponent, at first I was thinking someone big like Kane or something like that. But um, I was wrong. But uh, like I said, right now with Ryback, I, I'm sure Tom likes him a lot. But I just feel like he don't, doesn't have that uh, momentum he had when he first came out. You know, when he had that feel with CM Punk. He, he doesn't have it right now, and he probably won't have it anytime soon. I'm not dying, I'm not giving up on Ryback. But um, we'll see what happens. But about that match, um, I really don't know what to say. I don't think it was a great match, <laughs> to be honest with you. But um, yeah, it's all pretty much I got to say about right back. I don't know what Oscar was watching, but um, <laughs> um, guess well, I thought that was a great opinion. match, right back. I thought it was a good match. Right back doesn't have great matches, and that was a good match. Um, right back. Oh. Um. Fucking Luke Harper made you know made that match look good. He definitely made Ryback look good in that match. And there's a lot of wrestlers that make people look good in matches. And 
Just like if you go back and look at the CM Punk right back match, CM Punk made right back look good. John Cena even made right back look good um, a while back. But I, I guess just your opinion. Um, did you want to say anything else about that match before we uh, move on? Nah. Yeah, I'll yeah, move screen. on. Luke Harper's the I'll man. That's all. We already know that. Huh? And so it, we know Luke Harper's the man. He's he's one of the best. We you know he was tearing up the indie team when he was uh, Brody Lee, and nothing's really changed. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely with you on that. Um, next match. Uh, how about that matchup with a uh, Bray Wyatt and Dolph Ziggler? Oh, I'd say Bray Wyatt, you're the fucking man. I was, I, I liked that match. It was, it was a good matchup. Um, you know, I think if they had more time, it could have been better. Uh, both those guys are, you know, top talents in the WWE. So it was no surprise that they went out there and had a had a good matchup. It was just, you know, it was a raw matchup, so you didn't really expect that it was going to be, you know. A, uh, a five-star classic, but for what it was, it was a good match. Uh, it was good to see on Raw. I mean, how about that Sister Abigail, though? That, I know. That fucking no sell gets right back up at, after the famous, sir. Yeah. And, he, and, and he, I, I, that... I, like, I, I find it funny that people are complaining on Twitter. They're like, oh, man, Bray Wyatt no selling a famous, sir. But yet at the same time, when somebody does it uh, over, you know, in Japan when they do the fighting spear, people are like, oh, that's awesome. It's, okay, pick, pick something. Either you like the fighting spirit or you don't. You know, pick a side. I liked it. It it, it did remind me of uh, the fighting spirit that they do over in Japan. Um, and they do it sometimes on the indie scene. Uh, over here in the states, so I liked it. It it just made Bray Wyatt seem more like like a like a monster, and I'm glad they're actually kind of building him back up to where he once was. So I liked it. Uh, I liked that Bray Wyatt went over, um, and hopefully they can just keep up with Bray Wyatt um, as a as a top guy. It just just keep it going. Make him make him seem like he's the craziest guy on the roster. You know, he, oh, he he's definitely gotta, he he the guy definitely looks strong in the uh, yeah. match. And hey, I, got, I tweeted out before. I was gonna I was say saying, he has I, a unique gimmick on the roster. You know, and to see him change from Husky Harris to Bray Wyatt, I mean, it's been it's been freaking crazy to see the transformation he's gone through. So. um there was a period where he wasn't really being used and it seemed like WWE wasn't doing anything with him. So if they're going to build him back up, that's fine. Once again, another guy that's young as hell that I think is going to have a long stay um, as a top guy in WWE. I tweeted out before the match started, I was like, Bray must go over. I don't care if you like Ziggler or not. Bray must go over in this match. And the WWE made the right decision. And um, I don't. And and another thing, I think Bray Wyatt's above the IC title. It will look good in his resume, but he's above that title. I think if you're gonna if you're gonna go on to WrestleMania to face the Undertaker, you're definitely above the IC title or the US title, uh, in my opinion. And another thing, I want to throw out because I know Ash was gonna talk because he hasn't said not a damn thing about that match. But um, why that promo he cut um was basically taking shots at Taker. Uh, all I just said the the man the man is magnificent. That's all. Um, Oscar, did you want to share any opinion on it? Because uh, you're pretty quiet over today. Well, I, I'm quiet on the main time talk about that Bray Wyatt versus um, Dolph Ziggler match. It was it was a better match than um. Right back and uh, Lou Harper. Of course, for, uh, of course it was. Yeah. I know, I know. I just I tell you, Tom talk first. So, and then um, 
going back to the little promo, of course, is mentioned the Undertaker. This started since SmackDown. You know, he's, he's been mentioned, you know, you, you know, I know he's talking about the Undertaker. But now the question is, how was the Undertaker going to respond? When would the Undertaker show up? We all knew this match was going to happen, and we'll see what's go- when, when it's going to happen. And possibly, hopefully, this will lead to a future world title shot. Because to me, if, if I was booking this, I will have Bray Wyatt go over to Undertaker at WrestleMania. Because if you really think about it, he beats Undertaker at WrestleMania. At least you got a heel, a, a heel that's going to be around for a while, and he could be around the world title picture. You know, not like Brock Lesnar, but you can make Bray Wyatt be around the world title feud. You know, instead of just having because anything can happen. I mean, what happens if Seth Rollins get hurt next week? You know, who are you gonna have your top heel? You gotta have Bray Wyatt there. So that's what you gotta do. You need, you need a backup plan just in case something's not right with Rollins. So I mean, that's what I would do. But uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I like what they're doing with Bray Wyatt now. I wish he could still have his family, to be honest with you, but I just like what they're doing right now with him. Uh, I, honestly, I know you mentioned the family. I, don't th- I, I think he's better off without the family. The family thing was a good thing for all of them at the, at the beginning, but now Bray Wyatt does not need them. It's like, why, why does he need Luke Harper or Eric Rowan now? We saw what happened to Eric tonight with Eric Rowan. He got jobbed by Rusev. And I just don't see any reason why Luke Harper needs Bray Wyatt. Now Luke Harper is getting his shine as a solo wrestler. And and, and plus Luke Harper. So I just don't see why the, the Wyatt family needs to be together. Just like the Shield doesn't need to be together no more. And they're not together no more. It, good things yeah, don't I last don't, long. I don't. I don't think that the Wyatt family needs to be together, but I feel like Rowan is a lot weaker without the Wyatt family. I feel like he needs something else to his character, whether it's a manager or just kind of something else with him. I feel like as a solo act, he can't do it. Um, but Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper can. Um, I just don't think Eric Rowan, he doesn't have the in-ring skills like uh, like Luke Harper does. He doesn't have the mic I think Eric Rowan has, but... has, I think Eric Rowan has, has the the skills in the ring, and and he definitely showed that he has better mic skills than Eric Rowan and I. I think they just don't know what to do with Eric Rowan. Yeah. I, I just don't feel like Eric, Eric... I mean, when you look at Eric Rowan compared to Luke Harper and Bray Wyatt, Eric Rowan doesn't have as good of in-ring skills as Luke Harper. He does have some... That I'll is true. That. I'll give him that. He does, I mean, Eric Rowan's not terrible. He's not, you know, a great colleague or, you know, Kozlov type of bad. Um, he has his faults. He's pretty okay. But, it, I mean, when you compare him to Luke Harper... It's, you, it doesn't even come close. And then when you compare his mic skills to Bray Wyatt, he falls flat. So that's why I feel like Eric Rowan was so much better in the Wyatt family because you really didn't notice those things. He was just kind of in there to be the silent kind of guy, and it works for him. When he's out on his own, it's a little bit harder for him. Um and I, I don't think he got job tonight. I think it was just more of making Rusev look um, strong, like, like, yeah, strong like a top heel because he's feuding with Cena, so he has to look like a, like a psycho. Um, and you know, it's not like he got pinned in five seconds. You know, the match didn't even start. So it's I funny because I had a conversation on Twitter with True God Immortal from Eyes on the Rain. And he thinks Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan need to feud, uh, or he thinks it's going to happen. I told him I don't think it needs to happen because I no. believe. No, I don't think I, it needs to happen. I think because the, the whole thing with the Wyatt family is the whole thing is that Bray Wyatt released uh, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan. 
he didn't have any beef with them. He didn't, you know, cost them any matches or anything. He didn't try to interfere. You know, they had their little thing at the Royal Rumble, but it was just kind of more of them reuniting, and it was every man for himself because it was the Royal Rumble. Um, it's not like the Shield where one guy turned his back on the other uh, on the other members of the group. It was Bray Wyatt releasing his two followers um, and setting them free, uh, whatever you want to call it. So to have them feud doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really need to happen. Um, I think Bray Wyatt should be, you know, feuding with uh, with uh, bigger fish. I think he's got bigger fish to fry than Eric Rowan. Yeah, same here. That's why I told him. I said Bray Wyatt's a way bigger star right now, and he doesn't need to go down to wrestle Eric Rowan, who I think is not over whatsoever. But who knows? Um, let's move on. Good talk here on Wrestling Heads Radio. You can also call up. I know we're going to get Stone Cold Podcast. You can call us up at 347-945-5566. Get at us. Talk some wrestling with us. Um, Jimmy Uso went on went one-on-one tonight against Cesaro. And um, I have to say, Cesaro, you're a fucking beast. Because it looks like at, at, in, in this match, Jimmy Uso basically had this match, uh, you know, for a win. Um, Tyson Kidd kind of got involved a little bit, not too much. Uh, Uso was going on the top rope to do the splash, you know, uh, but Cesaro caught him in midair with the very European uppercut to get that one, two, three. I ought to say Cesaro is a fucking beast, and this looks like. Fastlane, not announced yet, but it looks like we're having a, a, a Cesaro and Tyson Kidd going against the Usos for the WWE Tag Titles, and damn it, that makes me happy. Uh, and I know somebody on the show has been on the Ascension real tough, but uh, it scares me because the Ascension is really not up to par with what they were in NXT in my book now. Like, they're just so boring right now. Like, they're boring. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah because you have a shitty tech division. What do you expect? I mean, you want them to bring in Enzo and um, Big Cass, and then you want to bring the Vaughn villains? You want to bring uh, I can, Dragon? I can the definitely, right now? I can, def- I can definitely defend this right now. Now, you call it a shitty division, but guess what? The Usos are putting on good matches with Stardust and Goldust. Putting on good matches... With, uh, okay, that's just one tag team. What? That's just one tag team. I'm not done talking. If you let me finish. Go ahead. <laughs> the Usos, even even though the okay, Usos were, are, who else? Who else? Give me another tag team. Are, are you gonna let else? me talk? Are you gonna let me talk? Or are you gonna, talk, or are, you gonna are you gonna block? Or are you are you gonna block me from talking? I mean, you really want well, the assistant well, to go over? I just want to see what you say. You, you keep saying Usos, Usos. Okay, keep going. I mean, well, let me finish talking. Then keep whoa, talking. Whoa, whoa. All right, guys, listen. Save save your beef for WrestleMania. We'll put you guys on the pre-show, and you guys can go out there for like 10 minutes and have a match, all right? I wouldn't give you guys the main card, but it looks like the main card is going to be filled up. So you guys get the pre-show, okay? You know, it doesn't really matter because... Oscar's in love with the Ascension. The only person I noticed in love with the Ascension. Uh, what is what is the Ascension? What is the Ascension going to do when they wrestle the Usos? Are, are they going to drive them too? No, they won't drive them. I mean, the Usos. Are, I'm not. I hate to say, it, but they're the best tag team in the division right now. But if you give them a better tag division, it would be much better. That's why I said. Go, go against these legends. Rematch but Billy they're Boyd. not. But still, they're not having no competitive matches like the Usos were. The Usos actually were having competitive matches. They're just having five minute matches or or two minute matches. They're not having competitive I know, I, matches. That's I know, my point. I know, I know, I know. But I mean, 
what else can you put on the Usos at WrestleMania? I know you love the Brass Ring Club a lot, but come on. Who wouldn't? Who it's shouldn't? Stuff. Who, know, who shouldn't love them? I know. I like them, too. But who? it's the WWE here. You think they're going to give them a WrestleMania spot? I, I kind of doubt it, bro. That's why I think I they will. That's why I said last week. When you when we all first fucking noticed that you know Cesaro and Kid are going against the Usos, so it looks like they have a tag team match at at Fastlane. That's why I said it doesn't mean none to me because we all know what's going to happen in the end. Usos are going to fucking beat them, and then they're going to be all um probably end up being the fucking battle royal. An- but if another team, there, another team. The Usos were putting good matches on, even though they're, they're not a team no more. Was Miz and Mizdow? That was another team that they were well basically Miz. They were who they're wrestling, but. I don't know, but maybe because I'm used to seeing better tag division back in the day. Like there was back in the attitude there, there was at least three tag teams you could talk about, or maybe just four. Guess what? You don't, you 2015. Don't you don't even have to go back to the attitude era to find good tag teams. During you know Raw and SmackDown from 2002 to 2007, you had a bunch of good tag teams. I mean, like, yeah, that was a good that was a good point era too. Like I, I like the Hard Dynasty. Yeah. You know, I like when the Usos first came out and attacked them. They all fucking fly out of nowhere and, and jumped them. That was freaking awesome. Yeah. Um, just, the Usos oh. were shit. <laughs> yeah, it's just that WWE has decided to not put focus on the tag team division like they once did. They, for some, it's yeah. just like the Divas division, they don't feel yeah. it's important to the product, and uh, it's a shame. And, and see, that's the thing is the Usos, I I personally don't like them, but it's because of how they're booked. You know, their book is the Usos. They have no character. They have no substance. It's okay. They're Samoan and they're Uso crazy. That's all we get as far as character development. And one's married to Naomi. That's it. That's not a character. That's stupid. And we know we they can put on good matches because. It's it's been done before. We've seen them put on really good matches with different tag teams. So we know they can go out there and put on good matches. It's just that they're boring, they're repetitive, they're stale. They just need some change, and they need. I think when you add more teams into into the division, it gets more interesting. Um, but WWE doesn't want to focus on the tag division. They feel like it's not important. So. The Usos, to me, are going to just continue being bland and stale. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. With the attention, you don't have a strong tag team division. Just put what you got in there and, and and just have them beat whoever you got. I mean, if you if you have a legendary tag team for one night, go ahead and beat them. If you can bring a legendary tag team for a few, bring it. Or if you can put a star dozen, go dozen, a raw. Have them beat them. If you need, if you have to put them in close match or train them, I mean that's all they have, you know. Really, in in NXT they had other options, you know. But now they're not in NXT, you know. I mean, there's oh, no, no. tag team. Yes, it's like the only tag team. Shut up. Now let me talk. The only tag team feud you can have a little excitement to is just the Ascension and Usos. That's all they got in the roster, and we'll see about the Brass Rings Club. I mean. Who knows? They might even break them up. I mean, yeah. I mean, we all saw what we they, what they do to start this whole past year, and you know, I just I'm you not. Mean last I'm year? not I, mean, I mean, the whole entire year, pretty much. Last year, I know he did the battle royal thing, and after that, that was it. But I mean, who knows about this brass ring club? It, it's gonna last for a while. So that's all I gotta say. Well, whoever likes the Ascension, good luck uh, having a boring division, either with the, uh, even with the Ascension's champs or or not champs. Yeah. So <laughs> you know uh, what sucks is the the Ascension have one of the best themes in WWE. I love that theme song. Yeah, and entrance they they probably, they have the best. I mean, one of the best, pretty much. But first, they don't have a tag team division to go with. I just only have a few so. And that's it. And maybe you could say you can you can see the brass rings club, but I, they just need to add more tag teams into it. Like they gotta focus on some tag teams, but WWE don't do that. So the next thing you notice, you're gonna they're gonna put a fucking Bo Dallas and 
and fucking Adam Rose tag team out of the blue. You know, it's just, it's just that's how it is, you know? <laughs> oh, God. Don't, don't yeah. give WWE ideas, please. Let's not forget, also, another tag team that is also now a tag team, the New Day. So, just saying. Yeah, that's true. Um, anyways, uh, also on Raw, Paige and Alicia Fox went one-on-one. Uh, Alicia Fox, I believe, uh, she lost the match tonight in a roll-up. Yep. And after the match, the Bellas were back at their heel tactics. Um, they basically come in after Alicia Fox attacks this page, and, uh, they spray black on Paige. Basically, says she needs a little color. Then, you know, <laughs> skin. And it's funny because I saw a tweet, and you guys might laugh at this. It's racist, though. Somebody said, "Well, it is black history." Yeah, I saw another where saying that will this lead to Paige joining the New Day? <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh my God! Yeah. Um, See, and this is just another thing. Like, this whole thing is built around Total Divas. And I don't watch Total Divas, so I don't give a fuck. Like, why do the Divas have to be focused around a crappy show on E? Uh, it's just, it's ridiculous. And it makes me care. I mean, Paige is talented. The Bellas are getting better. Alicia Fox is talented. Natalia's talented. There's a lot of divas on the roster, the main roster that that are talented, and then you have a bunch of bunch of women down in NXT are talented as well. But it's like, okay, they're going to be feuding over a show that's going to be on the E network. I don't think they're feuding over. I mean, I don't think they're really feuding over the show though. Like, they, I haven't really but heard the. I haven't heard them bring up the the uh, the fucking show in the middle of feuds anymore. Yeah, maybe I don't. I I just feel like that's what they're doing. They're doing it all for Total Divas. I could be I wrong, was, but that's I don't know. I don't know. They never really. Maybe, maybe Tom is right in a way because I, I don't know if you guys noticed, but the ratings went down. But it's still the most watched show on E. I can't believe it's more watched than um that Kardashian show. But um. Do I do I think you never watch Kardashians? <laughs> I'm joking. I don't I'm really joking. know. All right. Um, All we have a couple. Just letting you guys know, we have a couple callers on hold. We will be putting them on in a minute. You can always call up three four seven nine four five 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 six six. We will put you on in a few minutes. Give us a sec, people. We will put you on. Hold your horses. You will be put. You will be put. You will get put on. Sorry about that. Somebody was calling. In the middle of uh, this podcast show, and I heard uh, Triple H was gonna go two hours on Raw, uh, but uh, we'll—I'm pretty sure us will talk about it on Friday since we're in the middle of the show. Going against Steve Austin in his podcast, but it's over now. So everybody listening to WH Radio here on the Elite Podcast Network. Yeah, if you want to call in and discuss some things tonight, then that's fine. But we'll be going over the whole thing later in the week because. Uh, apparently, Triple H uh, talked about a lot of shit tonight. But he says he wants. He says he wants to give the divas more time too. And yeah, no, I, I heard, I, I heard uh, um, CM Punk got mentioned too. Yeah, so did yeah. Uh, one Miss China. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm, not sure. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to get off track, but I fucking love Stone Cold. He is the best. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely yeah. watching that after. And I, I know a lot of folks are going to call up, probably talking about the Steve Austin podcast, kind of probably spoil us, but I really don't want to get spoiled. But um, let's take the first call real quick. Uh, we're going to go one by one, and we will get everybody, so please hold your horses, people. We will put you on. Uh, I see everybody's number here. Let's go with A65. I think that's smart cast. A65. Yo, what's up? Smart, smart cast, what's going on? Uh, not much, man. I'm over here working, listening to y'all, watching the Triple H thing, um, multitasking the hell out of my life. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, and finished watching Raw too. Those. Yeah. So. Yeah. I didn't get to catch the first part of your uh, of the show because I was on my way to work, but uh, I didn't get to hear if y'all liked Raw or not. So. <laughs> Yeah, Raw was Raw was decent. Raw, Raw uh, was definitely decent, uh, yeah. but I definitely saw you tweeting during the Steve Austin podcast. Uh, oh yeah, is it something that you think would we'll enjoy? Yeah, I'm trying not to give away spoilers on that when I tweet, cause, but I, I think I gave away a couple of them. But uh, yeah, it was. I just I try not to give away spoilers on that stuff. It was really, it was actually really, really good. And uh, Triple H just. At first, I didn't I didn't think it was as good as the Vince one, but as it went on, I was like, dude, this guy really needs to be running WWE, and he needs to be running it tomorrow, because he he gets it, man. He gets all of it. He gets the fans. He gets the business, man. He gets it. He needs to be running the show. He does, Great. and I, I I feel like everybody tries to paint out Triple H as like either he's a good guy or he's a bad guy. It's like well, Triple H is going to have his faults. You know, he may have a bit of an ego. He's probably going to have some bad ideas. He's not going to be perfect. But tr- the difference is Triple H is in touch with 2015, what people want, what people want to see. You know, he's he's not stuck back. I don't know where Vince McMahon's stuck back. He is, like, stuck back in, like, in, in, the, in the 80s still. Um, but I don't expect Triple H to be perfect, but I can see... WWE being better with him. No. Well, NXT isn't perfect. NXT is pretty close to perfect, but it ain't perfect. I mean, look at C.J. Parker. He's terrible. And, <laughs> well, I mean, it's crazy because I hear a lot of wrestlers, I want to say Adam Thurston probably gave, uh, uh, basically put him over. I wanted Somebody put him yeah. over here on the show. Yeah. I know Kevin Owens has put him over. Um... Uh, I've seen a lot of indie wrestlers put over C.J. Parker, and I can't like dispute that. They must there must be something in the guy that they're not using in NXT. And I, we know I him as a jobber. Yeah, and I think yeah. C.J. Parker's role is fine. I think he could uh, be more of a of a heel and have more time. But I mean. Not all guys are going to be top talents or whatever. So to be a jobber in NXT, maybe maybe he's okay with it. Yeah. Yeah, but you guys got to remember what, what things. Triple H had made some big mistakes. Like example, the Roman Reigns were rumble. That was his call. Okay. The, are we sure about that? Well, yeah. Wait, I'm, wait, I'm, I'm, wait, I'm wait, sure Roman Reigns is whose call? Triple H's I'm, call. I don't know if it was Triple H's call. I know Triple no, H. No, he then liked, he just put the blame on Vince McMahon on the show. Then he, 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 he yeah. even, I, I know Triple H likes Roman Reigns, but I think maybe he knows that it, it's too quick to push the guy. And I can see why he likes the guy. Like I said, Roman Reigns is not bad. It's not no. like he's the worst thing that ever has come into the WWE. It's just that when you force somebody down our throats. We're we're gonna revolt, and because we want to see somebody else right now, and in a few years maybe Roman Reigns will be one of the top guys, and we'll be okay with yeah. it. Like, yeah, yeah. Roman, yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah, you see, Tom, I agree with you, but like I said, that Triple H thing was, I have to say, like maybe eighty percent of blaming on him because, first of all, I know he planned this months ago. Who knew about Daniel Bryan's condition? Will he be back on time to rumble? He did not know that. But if Daniel Bryan was still was out today, will we hear still hear booze of, of Roman Reigns? Who do we all want to see go against Brock Lesnar? Honestly, the other name at this Batista. At, at this point, I really couldn't say, tell you if it was Vince McMahon's uh, choice or Triple H because. They all say Triple H does make. I mean, excuse me, Vince McMahon makes the last, the last choice of whatever in the backstage. But um, Smartcast, I know um, uh, we love talking to you and all, but we got like two other callers. I'm gonna put you <laughs> yeah. on hold, bro. I'll put you go back on a little later. Yeah, go uh, for it. All right, for sure, bro. Uh, next caller, three on one. I think that's King. Um, I, excuse me, um, <laughs> Mark Overtagos. 
Yes, indeed. It is the I almost called you King podcast. Taco, bro. I'm sorry, what? I almost called you King Taco. That's like a place oh, I heard that. Uh, <laughs> King Taco. Can, yeah, that, that's cool, I mean, man. Gonna, that's good. You just found him the perfect wrestler name, King Taco. It's like, cool, I man. Swear to you. I, like, hey, ask Oscar. There's a fucking restaurant here called King Taco. That's why. <laughs> there's more than one King Taco around here. I'm sure there'll be more around anywhere, so. Uh, and I, I, you know, I was just trying to think of a creative Twitter handler. You know, I like tacos, and you know, I, I mark out for them because I like them. So that's where the name came from. But, uh, what's going on, man? What's going on? Uh, uh, nothing, man. I I just got done watching uh, most of this podcast. It was pretty good, but you know, more of the same, like the McMahon one. You know, when Austin would ask something. And uh, Triple H would kind of beat around the bush, and he would, like, kind of halfway answer a question, you know, like, somewhat dodge some shit, kind of, and sort of, like, change the subject, and, you know, but uh, he was straightforward with a few things, you know, like, the whole, okay, I I was hearing a smart cast uh, talking, and, yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything, but uh, an interesting uh, discussion about China. Yeah, I, I definitely right. can't wait to watch it. But yeah, man, yeah. Uh, Raw was pretty good. Uh, it looks like they were planting the seeds, maybe for a Roman Reigns heel turn. And one thing I have to mention: there was there was these pictures coming up on Raw about some dude. He was in this I mask, saw that. and he. It, it, I don't get it, and nothing nothing ever happened. I thought that was Randy Orton. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, some I mean, people talking about, like, some people said it was Boogeyman. I thought it was uh, Orton or uh, Sheamus, possibly, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't understand it. I mean, they had him there, but nothing was done, so I'm kind of head-scratched about that. Yeah. Uh, when I, when Raw went off, I was like, uh, what happened to the guy who was, uh, you know, masks. Um, like you don't like when you work at a venue and people wear masks in your venue. You tell them to take that mask off. It could be anybody. That person could snatch somebody's purse, or you know, <laughs> you know. So yeah, I, know. I mean, the, the dude looked, he looked like a fucking member of ISIS, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe maybe oh, wow. he was part of the eighth and eighth. Maybe they're invading WWE now. Oh God! What, oh, I mean, sons of anarchy. <laughs> okay, well, this one thing I don't, I, this one thing I need to figure out though about the guy in the mask. There's also another photo of him inside a car, so I, I want to figure out where where he got that photo from. That's where I, I want to know. Like, is this a, some kind of angle going on? Because I don't I don't think it's some kind of fan from the um, what was Raw today? Um, what was Raw today? Denver, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think so. Man from Denver is trying to start something here, but there's already two photos out with this mask guy. One sitting down, the other one is when he was in the car. It looks like he took a selfie for himself. So we gotta figure out what's you, going on here with the guy in the mask thing. You, you know, you know what it just came to my mind. Uh, I'm not sure, like if y'all watch NXT all the time, but I remember there's been some vignettes about these uh, some dude like in a mask talking. So I wonder if it has anything to do with that. I know there's, I know there's some guy following. Tyler Reese. I don't know. But yeah, who knows? Been There's a guy following yeah. Tyler Breeze on NXT, but who knows? Um, that's <laughs> something we had to figure out. If it was going to happen Thursday, if we're going to see the same shit Thursday, are we going to see it next week? That's what we're going to have to figure out. But, uh, hey, uh, Mark, our photographer, before we let you go, you want to throw out anything else? We got another caller on hold. Uh... Oh, man, I'm kind of in chill mode tonight, you know, just relaxing. So I just wanted to call for a few minutes, uh, hopefully go ahead and uh, get some more time in uh, the next time or whatever, man. But I'll talk to you all later on, man. I'm going to go ahead and uh, watch something. I have no idea. Definitely, man. And go mark up for some tacos or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to lose weight, man, so no, nah, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right, all man. Right. Take it easy. All right, take care, right, brother. We have one more caller at five 
540 area code. 540, you're on WH Radio. Who's calling? It's John from uh, Front Royal. What's going on, man? What you want to talk about? I want to talk about the uh, matches for Monday Night Raw. Were they good or what? First, I like to talk about Ziggler versus Bray Wyatt. I think that was a good match. And Daniel Bryan and Seth Rollins, pretty much a good match. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, we are definitely going to see Brian versus Roman Reigns at uh, Fast Lane. But yeah, I Fast Lane should Brian, be pretty good. But I don't think Brian will win that one because uh, cause Kane might come down and interfere. Kane? Yeah, Kane. I don't know. I'm... Oh? Yeah, well, we well, hear you. Kane, I have a question for you. Why would Kane interfere, though? Because remember that casket match Daniel Bryan had against Kane? But I thought that was supposed to end the little rivalry they had. I don't know, but I don't think that would end the rivalry. But I heard rumors about Ziggler versus Bryan at WrestleMania 31. But to go either yeah. way. <laughs> That definitely is true. But, yeah, um, speaking of speaking of Bray Wyatt, that promo he cut, which he said, "Come and find me." Does that symbolize a feud between him and the Undertaker at WrestleMania time? Oh, uh, definitely. I mean, I, if you read if you read in between the lines, he said he used to be uh, the monster, or you know, you know, it was something like that. You know, basically what he said, and he mentioned something about the devil. You know. I mean, the only person I could think, it's not going to be Kane. Fuck that. So, it's got to be Taker. So. <laughs> Hell no, it won't be Kane. I mean, no. I'd be good to see a Taker-Wyatt match, but at the same time, we got to worry about Undertaker's health, you know? Because hey. after that match against Brock Lesnar, he wasn't the same, but he looked good in a few few private photos, public photos. Uh, I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that. Taker looks like shit. Taker looks like he needs to just take a retirement right now and just go to the Hall of Fame. Um, that's my opinion. A lot of people probably don't agree with that, but Taker just needs to go ahead and uh, uh, spend time point? with his wife. He, he, just, he needs to spend time with his wife and his kids. What's another so. point? What's another point what? after you're done talking? Who else do you think would you like to see in the Hall of Fame? Um, Owen Hart, British Bulldog. Yeah, Owen Hart is well overdue for a, a spot at the uh, at the Hall of Fame because I wasn't watching WWE back in 1999. Hardy, but, but when I saw everything on YouTube, it just, you know, big wave crashing in front of me. I mean, because Owen Hart, he was one of those, he was one of the, nicest guys you could ever receive in the business as well. I mean, his bro- his battles with his brother Brad, Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold. You know your Steve stuff. This, this kid knows his stuff. Um, but we, we actually want to I'm thank tw- you for calling up. I'm, not, um, I'm a man, 23 years old. <laughs> all right. Um, well, we got uh, more callers. Um, maybe you can call up uh, Friday or something. Okay. I'll talk to you guys all later. Right. All right. Then. Take care. I think we talked to that person before. That person, uh... uh yeah, he, that person be calling a lot. <laughs> that person used to call, actually, actually used to call us when we used to be on the Blog Talk backslash Wrestling Heads radio yeah, Blog yeah. Talk channel. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Shout out to that person. <laughs> yeah. But, um, real quick, we'll we'll uh, we'll uh, throw uh, SmartCast and, um... Uh, and uh, Marco Vitago is back on in a little bit, but let's cover let's cover Raw a little bit more. We're almost done. How about the Miz and Mizdow uh, little argument in backstage? Mizdow gets fired. It looks like we're finally going to see these two uh, probably uh, feud it out and uh, have a match at WrestleMania because Mizdow or Damian Sandow, should I call him, uh, caused the Miz his, his magic of Sin Cara out of all fucking people. Um, and I know. We've talked about this a lot here on the show. Uh, Miz versus Damian Sandow. Uh, finally here. Uh, Tom, talk to me. Yeah, you know, I think 
this is something that everybody's been waiting for. Uh, finally, you know, Miz and Miz now most likely officially broken up because of tonight. Um, people are still really behind Miz now. They want him to kick kick the shit out of Miz and uh, get get that huge victory over him. I mean, I got to give Miz a lot of credit. I mean, he is being the, the ultimate heel. He just makes you hate his fucking guts. And it's not even like go away heat like Roman Reigns is getting. It's just like you're a fucking asshole type of heat, which is what Miz is supposed to be, and you hate him, and you want Miz now to kick the shit out of him. So uh, Miz is doing a good job in his role, so I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Um, so it's going to hopefully be – it'll be a good match at WrestleMania, a good undercard match to, to fill up the card, hopefully. And um, – I don't know. The only thing is, where would Miz Dow go after uh, after WrestleMania? You know, I don't know where. I can see him. I can see him kind of sneaking in either the IC uh, title look or somewhere. You know, because uh, Damian can go, and I I think they screwed up uh, with Damian. You know, by having him lose to John Cena a while back when he won the briefcase. But uh, hopefully, you know, they learn from their mistakes, and we'll see. What they got planned for Damien, but those two in the matches, yeah, Miz and uh, Damien is long overdue. Um, Oscar, do you want to talk about those two finally um, breaking up? Yeah, um, yeah, it's obviously going to lead to a WrestleMania match, um, or maybe a fast lane match, which I hope they don't do that, but I'd rather see these guys going to WrestleMania. Interesting to see what, what's going to go down with these two coming up in the next week. What we see. Any kind of physicality between the two, um, any time, pretty much anytime soon, you can say. But uh, yeah, it's, I think it's pretty good. I think it's time for the this team to break up and and see what Miz Dow could do without the Miz. I mean, he just like if you really think about it, this this he started off because he's just doing all these um, wacky stuff that the Miz was doing, all these all these imitations. That's pretty much it, and that's how he got over. But uh, we'll see what he can do afterwards, after that. And I just hope there's not no one you wonder thing, you know. Um, let's see what the music is. I, I actually do do like when Ms. Dow actually do all that stuff. It makes me laugh, too. I, <laughs> it just it entertains me. So let's, let's see can this continue on and uh, where this goes. I mean, for Sand, Sandow's career, you know. And uh, it was funny, like, interesting that I heard that uh, I heard him on um, Steve Austin's podcast. He was on Jericho's. Actually, it was Jericho's podcast, and uh, he, he did mention that you know he, since he did all these um, these little antics when he was Matt Stevenson, LeBron James, uh, all these other things, he just noticed that this was something he should be doing, and he probably found something here, and. Uh, I guess he probably did. Like just like how with Stone Cold, he needed to get out of this ringmaster gimmick, and he has to be this cold. Uh, I don't say psychotic, but you know how he is. He has to be Stone Cold Steve Austin, and it worked out for him definitely. You know, thank God he got out of this ringmaster gimmick. <laughs> um, let's just see what Miz will do for it, and uh, just can't wait to see when these two guys get on. Definitely, definitely. And, of course, we talked about the Seth Rollins, Daniel Bryan match, awesome match, basically Ring of Honor instead of WWE Ring. Um, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Fast forward that shit. Go yeah. watch it. it. It's a must-watch match. Uh, yeah, I just think it, 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 I think, it, I think it would have been better if J&J and Big Show were not there or Roman Reigns. Yeah. I don't mind J&J, but Big Show, yeah, just get the fuck out of there. Like, J&J is just funny because, uh, I mean, I, I love Mercury and Noble, so uh, I don't mind them out there. But Big Show, he can fuck off. But uh, it was it was weird because I was, uh, you know, I was looking on Twitter uh, before the match started and someone posted a, a picture um, from Ring of Honor and it was uh, Brian and Rollins shaking hands and it said that was then. And then it showed a picture of them tonight, and it was like, this is now. And it was just crazy to think that... That was me. Both, 
it was just crazy to think that both these guys that were, you know, big on the indies only not too long ago are now main eventing Raw going against each other as two of the biggest stars in the company. I mean, let's not forget these two will be main eventing a lot, a lot of fucking pay per views and Raws yeah. in the, in the future. These guys are the future of the WWE. Yeah, I mean, as much as we complain about WWE, they do some things right, and it it just it's it's always good to see like this to see stuff like this happen because even though we always don't like what WWE is doing at least for the guys that are on the indie circuit right now, it gives them hope. It gives them hope that I can maybe make it one day. There's a good chance that I could be into the WWE and succeed. I mean, look at at a guy like Kevin Owens. Who would have ever thought that Kevin Steen, the guy who's yelling, fuck Ring of Honor and doing all these crazy matches, would ever be in the WWE? A lot of people probably would never... I've expected that. I was one of them. That. Yeah, I was one of them. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, it's it's insane. So, seeing Brian and Rollins go at it gives, I think, a, a lot of hope to to indie guys saying, you know what, I think I can do it too. Definitely. Do. <clears throat> um, let's take a quick break, and I have a announcement to make here on the show. That the folks might want to know I'm not sure if we're going to do it But we will be able to do it here on Elite Podcast Network uh, We'll be right back We'll take a quick commercial break And we'll talk uh, some matches that have been announced In Professor Wrestling today We'll be right back Hey guys, this is Pikachu, And I'm challenging Wrestling Heads Radio To a Pokemon battle Boom, baby Hey, this is Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish, Red Dragon, Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champion, who happen to be the best tag team on planet Earth, and you are listening to Wrestling Heads Radio. Welcome back to the Elite Podcast Network. This is WH Radio. Um, a couple matches have been announced for WrestleMania week slash weekend. Um, the WWN Live Experience, they have announced today, Thursday, we will see Drew Galloway, Evolve Champion, go one-on-one with Derek Wolf, PJ Black, a.k.a. Justin Gabriel in a non-title matchup. And that's the Evolve show that me and Oscar will be going to. Um, big announcement. Uh, before we uh, talk about that match... Um. Uh, before we go, talk about the match, is that match a no disqualification match? I thought it was some kind of gimmick match. Yeah. Uh, no resurrection, no limits, non-title match. Okay, I thought I thought I saw no DQ or something like that, but oh well. <laughs> yeah. Also, fr- Friday, March twenty-seventh. Uh, we have first time ever Ricochet going against Daredevil PJ Black. Justin Gabriel, a.k.a., just letting you guys know again in case you guys didn't get it the first time. And also, WWN Super Show Saturday, you got Generation Next. That is Austin Aries and Roderick, and, uh, and, uh, Roderick Strong going one on, um, excuse me, going in a tag team match uh, uh, against Ricochet and Uha Nation, the next generation. God that, damn. That is going to be insane. Um, I, I, I marked out a little bit when I saw the Generation Next was uh, going back together and teaming up once again. I, I marked out a little bit. Um, they're doing, they're announcing some good matches. I mean, hopefully it gets people as interested as it should be. I mean, this is some crazy stuff going on. Oh, yeah. Definitely. And now you see more TNA guys doing more independent shows. You know, we said on Friday, you know, they're, you know, the whole the whole thing with Destination America is not it's not like Spike where, you know, you, you don't give them like the rights, the, the full exclusive rights. You know, you, you're gonna see guys like Bobby Roode doing the indie shows, and them. So, yeah, I mean, now you see the Austin Aries in the W in Evolve. That's kind of crazy, you know. And yeah, I mean, I mean, expect that. So that's gonna be awesome. Oh, don't forget, Drew Galloway's in TNA now too. 
So yeah. <laughs> Fuck Tanner. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, but um, yeah, definitely WWE and Live is definitely doing big things right now. Uh, I'm I'm definitely happy for those dudes over there. Um, Gabe definitely booking some fucking great matches, and the WWE and Live experience is not done from there. You know, Ricochet is also involved in the uh, King of, Kings of Indies uh, event. Also, uh, we talked about that last week. So yeah, like Ricochet is gonna be busy that whole week uh, doing big things. Another match that has been uh, what the fuck is that? Yeah, what the um, fuck was that? I was gonna ask you the same thing. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, like I was saying, uh, there is um another match that was announced that's gonna also be. Coming March first, ACH goes one on one against the phenomenal AJ Styles at Ring of Honor's 13th anniversary. We will be in the building along with Elite Podcast Network member Nathan from the uh, Eyes on the Ring uh, podcast group. So um, we get to meet somebody that's part of the the uh, network here, uh, Oscar. Yeah, finally, right. Now we need time to get to PWG. And, and it better happen this year than that. I'm going to freaking, I don't know, throw money at this door or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to get down, see some PWG. Um, so hopefully it'll happen. Hopefully we can get uh, Mr. Matthew Grant down as well. But uh, we'll have to see. We'll have to don't see tell me he's going to he's gonna be there before you will. <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll be down there at the same time. So, oh, we can get turned the fuck up out there. Uh, but how about that match? ACH getting that opportunity to go against AJ Styles? That's great. I mean, uh, hopefully, you see, this is about ACH here. He's been kind of throwing us a good matches. I feel like he should be better off than he is right now. It's just that the whole. Thing about you know missing flights and all that, it's fucking killing them, you know. And I'm glad I mean, that was last game. year. This is 2015. We on to a whole new, you know, thing. Like we ain't gonna bring the old shit up. This this is 2015, it's baby. It's a matter of six months. It's not a whole year ago. Like it happened the beginning of like of January or, or the beginning of the year. You know, I'm just saying. Like it's just that, man. It's just. I just feel like he should be in a better spot, but hell, they're just giving a match with AJ Styles. It's, I I think it's gonna be a good match. But that's you a know. great opportunity for him though. It's not like he's going against a bum. He's going against I AJ know, fucking know, Styles. AJ Styles, yeah. I'm just saying. All I hope this thing, this thing brings him back. You know, to give ROH his trust. You know, the, it's just either the last few months they've been down on him because all these fucking. Um, Miss flights and all that shit, it, it really fucked him over, pretty much. Because it seems like he was going to beat Lethal for the title, but it didn't go that way, so... I get I what mean, you're saying. I definitely get what you're saying. But let's not forget, also, he's also been put in uh, another important match that just happened, like, two weeks ago, or maybe three, uh, when him, Cedric, and Matt Seidel went against, you know, Bullet Club, which is AJ Styles yeah. and the Bucks. So he's been in some yeah. in very important matches. Yeah. So. Yeah, and ACH teamed up with the Bucks at uh, at final battle against uh, Cedric Alexander and was it the Addiction? Yeah, it was Cedric Alexander and the Addiction. Yeah. So I, even though ACH didn't make a, a big mistake last year, I feel like he got a he got a second chance, and that that's the wrestling business. You can make mistakes. You know, as long as they're not, you know, major mistakes. But, you know, you're allowed to make mistakes and get some second chances. And, you know, ACH went against uh, Alberto El Patron just over the weekend. And now he's going against AJ Styles. And the thing with uh, Alberto El Patron is he told Ring of Honor who he wanted to face. So for him to tell them that he wanted to face ACH says a lot about the guy. Um, so I feel like Ring of Honor definitely knows that there's something into the guy, um, and I think he's I think he's getting back on the right track. 
Yeah. Uh, speaking of Ring of Honor, I just saw a tweet right now from uh, Tadarius Thomas tweeting Bobby Fish and Kyle Riley said farewell to everybody. Didn't see you guys. It's been a great pleasure. Hope to uh, cross paths again. One love. And uh, Kyle Riley uh, tweeted back said, thanks, man. Hope to see you soon, and good luck. So that is a done data for TD. Um, and in the W, excuse me, Ring of Honor. You guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I hear you. I, I was, I'm a big Kadarius Thomas fan, but uh, the guy definitely had some talent in the ring. Uh, he was in some pretty interesting tag teams. He was just, you know, in a tag team with uh, Watanabe. That, that, that was some pretty interesting stuff going on. So, definitely stinks to see a guy who's been in Ring of Honor for a couple of years uh, leave. But, you know, he's doing some other things in life. So you just gotta gotta give it up for the guy and you know wish the best. Definitely. Um, Ash, did you want to say anything about that or no? I think we talked about this the other day. I mean, I mean, if he found another career path, and he wants to do MMA. That's good for him. Um, I wish him luck with that. I mean, it sucks that he's gonna leave. It's just still like ever since. A general rush broke up. It just seems like just put him in 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 the wolves. Like, okay, we're gonna put you with decade and just put you in this and that. Like, just nothing for him. And I guess he just realized that. Like, All right, let me try something else with MMA. So, wish him luck with that. Definitely, definitely. NXT still in the middle of their tournament. Um. We're gonna probably talk more NXT this uh this uh Friday, uh along with the Stone Cold Podcast, so be sure to tune in on that. Um, did you guys wanna cover anything else before we end the show? Um Oh I don't Ernie know, Ladd. I mean I know. Oh, I know Hall of Fame. Oh see Ernie Lad, I don't know if you guys uh are familiar with them, but Ernie Land's going to the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, I don't know if you guys are really familiar with him, but I know he was a former football player. I want to see he plays the Chargers. Then, you know, he's going to the WWE Hall of Fame. I, at first I thought he was already I, in, but he's not in. So I thought Ernie Land was already in the Hall of Fame. Well, did he announce in the, in the, all of, in the thing today, bro? I'm pretty sure that was for Black History Month. Oh, yeah, that was, was Black History Month. No, that was yeah, Black that History Month. Yeah, that was for Black History Month. Well, well okay. Mr. Yeah, he was, yeah he... Big Cat Ernie Ladd was inducted into the Hall of Fame, I think, in 95. Yeah. Okay, what? what let me, let me double check. Right, yeah, it wasn't 95. If that's the case, I got, bad, so I got some bad information from the mysterious Mexican here. <laughs> that is never bad listened to because he was never, inducted never into him. the Hall of Fame a long time ago. Yeah, guys, I was thoughtful too. Like, let me dig down the Hall of Fame those time ago. So, yeah, just want to throw it out there real quick. Something from for Black History. Yeah, just want to throw it out there. Hideo Tommy versus Finn Balor. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I, and I think it's this week. This week on NXT. So all fucking wrestling fans that really love these love professional wrestling are going. All eyes are going to be glued to that. I guarantee you that match will be talked about. But um, it's going to be one of those matches that people are going to be talking about uh, at the end of the year. So uh, be sure yeah. to tune in. And we'll, be, we'll, be talk, we'll be talking about it Friday. Um, oh, man, that should be should be fucking great. Yeah, I mean, I I don't want to hear that much reviews about like how people were talking about Cesaro and Sami Zayn, but I know it's going to be good, though, I can tell you that. But... Hopefully it'll be great. Something that we can come on and say, "Hey, I'm oh, sorry." When we end 2015, say, "Hey, that was a great good match in 2015." You know, so this is only the beginning of the month. So uh, we'll see what happens. Or say the beginning of the year. <laughs> I said month, but yeah, we'll see what happens. And um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're gonna end the show a little early. Uh, 
we actually have 20, 20, 25 minutes left, but I'm pretty sure we actually, we actually ran uh, stuff out to say. We're going to sh save some of that stuff for Friday. Um, but uh, you can always follow us on Twitter at Wrestling Heads. Uh, be sure to follow us. We will tweet back. Uh, you know, also follow Elite Podcast Net uh, to follow the rest of the shows here on the network. I believe that any power rankings is tomorrow. Tune into that. Uh, check the website out, wrestlingheads.com. If you want to support us, go ahead and buy a T at prowrestlingtees.com backslash wrestlingheads. And if you know us in person, we will be having that Randy Savage logo that our buddy made, our buddy Jeremy made uh, for us. Uh, we're actually going to have that. We're, we're, we're going to have to sell that, you know, uh, or or give it away to, to some of the wrestlers because Pro Wrestling Tees does not allow any Randy Savage stuff up there because Randy Savage thinks he has a store or whatever. So, uh, but, uh, Support us. Uh, what else we got? YouTube.com backslash wrestling heads. Subscribe us on there. Uh, show us oh, some thanks for anyone listening. Uh, from there, thank you for subscribing. We've been getting some subscribers in there, so uh, thanks for subscribing uh, for that. So, yeah. And um, I'm WH Skits. Follow me on Twitter. Please don't talk shit, because I don't have time for the shit. <laughs> All right, I guess same here for me. Do uh, you follow me at Sinister Six Thirty Two? If you're gonna run your mouth, I'm gonna run run mouth at you, and I will be making fun of your mother. <laughs> I don't care if she's dead or not. And uh, wow, yeah, ruthless. <laughs> ruthless. I'm not. I'm ruthless. not that ruthless. Yeah. I'll just hit that block button. <laughs> Well, um, but you want to see some nice things to say like wrestling or sports, and yeah, you can hit me up on that too. Sinister Six Three too. You can also follow me on Instagram. Follow Wrestling Heads on Instagram because we've been putting some more photos in, or interesting photos as of late. And um, who knows? Maybe we put some photos this Saturday when we go to Lucha Underground, right, Skits? Because we're going to be there Saturday. Lucha yeah. Underground definitely doing big big shit right now. People need to keep uh, stick their eyes on on that uh, promotion. So, yeah. Oh, and hold oh. on, hold on. And as uh, before, we put my plugs. I just want to say, this is this Wednesday's episode is the episode that me and Skit uh, went those are recent tapings, the first episode. So um, yeah, we just gotta just check it out, and uh, hopefully, you can see me and Skit on TV again. <laughs> so um, yeah, check it out. Uh, it was good taping. I, I'd say I have to say it got better than than it was last time. So if you like Lucha Underground. I think you'll like it more in the next couple of weeks. And all we got to say is, Skits will be chatting C, 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 C. <laughs> yeah, there's, real quick before I, I pass on the top, there's a lot of people showing up to Lucha Underground. Like, oh, yeah. um, Willie Mack is showing up, if you know who Willie Mack is. Uh, of course, uh, Del Rio showed up over there. Uh, Swerve. Chit Chiller Melissa is, is rumors that she's gonna be showing up, uh, and uh, Shane sure. Strickland from from yep. CZ Dub. Yeah, and that one. Of, and, get to uh, and that announcement that I had to make, starting uh, February, I believe nineteenth, we're able to do three hour shows. Um, not sure if we're gonna do it, but. Never know, so that'd be crazy. Three hours, wow. <laughs> yeah, may maybe once in a while. We don't want to turn into Monday Night Raw. Oh, damn, that's crazy. Go ahead, Tom. So, do... All right. All right. You can follow me on Twitter at two tweet me. Follow me on there. I'll be sure to follow you back. We'll talk wrestling. We'll talk whatever. Uh, but give me a follow, and just like Skit said in the beginning, be sure to follow the Elite Podcast Network at Elite Podcast Net. Uh, we got a bunch of things going on this week. The Indie Power Rankings is going to be live tomorrow at 8 p 9 p.m. on the city. 
And uh, they're also going to be doing their tag team top five reveal on Wednesday at 3 o'clock Eastern with Mr. All Ego, Ethan Page, who has been on the show before. He's a good friend of the Elite Podcast Network, one of the best supporters of what we're doing here. Uh, good all around, dude. Give him a follow. Yeah, shout out to people. All Ego. Shout out to All Ego and Alpha One Wrestling. Yeah, oh. I wonder if, if um, Mr. All Ego is going to give out that blowjob story again. Like he did, <laughs> like he did his show. <laughs> yep, and then Mike and Tom's show this Thursday, they're going to have Super Cop Justice and um, Shinron, who does Beyond Wrestling. He does Chikara. They're both going to be on there, and I'm sure they're going to talk Beyond Wrestling. Um, they're going to talk Alpha One, AIW, whole bunch of different things. So check that. That's dropping this Thursday. And Tyson Dukes is going to be on Beyond the I was Three just Counts about to say that. this yeah. Wednesday. Uh, be sure to stay tuned for the exact time. Tyson Dukes, one of the best guys going up in Canada, He's gotten a few shots in Ring of Honor. He was just over there this weekend, and hopefully he's coming back. So you're going to want to listen up. Great veteran in the business. He's got a good mind for the business, and he's going to be on Beyond the Three Count. Be sure to follow them, too, at Beyond the Three Count. And, um, yeah, that's just about it for this week. And, and this Sunday, week, uh, 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 Sunday, Eyes uh, of the Ring. Yeah, Sunday, Eyes of the Ring. Um, two yeah, I'm going to be back Sunday, so there's going to be no Super Bowl. So you can listen to them on Sunday, and they won't be <laughs> talking about the Seahawks blowing the game. Yeah. And, and um, hold on, uh, real quick, I just want to say we will. I we we will we'll have um, Hanson on. Uh, Hanson will be on the show here live on uh, Wrestling Heads Radio. Uh, it's gonna be February twentieth. Uh, February twentieth. It's gonna be me and him. It's gonna be early. It's gonna be early. Uh, early interview. So February twentieth, three p.m. East Coast time. That should be fun. Hopefully, we can get some more guys here on the show. Uh, hit us up on Twitter uh, and tell us who you would like for us to interview, talk wrestling with. Any guys from Ring of Honor you guys want to hear on here before uh, their big show? Hit up, any PWG guys, whatever. Let us know. Yeah, and another thing before we go off, I just I just thought of something here. A question to both of you guys: Who have been watching Ring of Honor lately? Like catching up the latest episodes. I I haven't. I'm I'm behind on Ring of Honor TV because it it, it was I was catching up on Ring of Honor and then I wasn't catching up on Lucha Underground. So I caught up on Lucha Underground, but then I fell behind on Ring of Honor TV. So I need to figure out a schedule where I can figure out uh, both of them at the same time. Yeah, because there's something that's been going on lately. Who the fuck is this dude wearing a mask talking and look like he's a new wrestler debuting? You know, it's funny that um, I, I, you probably Thanks won't get it, but... <laughs> yeah, but I don't know who it is, though. That's a, how, how I'm going to spoil it to you if you don't know who the fuck it is. That's something I should have figured out, though. But you know what's funny, though, Skitch? You're going to laugh at this, but um, I sent that photo of the person a mask, and this guy wears the same mask that Eli Erifite comes out through his entrance. So I tweeted to Eli, hey, did you sign with Ring of Honor? And uh, Deshaun Two Cents replied, he just replied, LOL, you know. <laughs> and then Eli actually replied, no, that's not me. I did not sign with Ring of Honor. So there you go. <laughs> but who are these guys? Wears the same mask as Eli Erifite. I don't know what Eli Erifite wore a mask. Well, he does when he comes out. Well, yeah. we're running out of time, guys. Catch this on Friday. WH Radio. Shout out to Smart Cash. Shout out to Margaret for Tacos for calling up. Shout out to yeah. everybody that's involved with the Elite Podcast Network. And I'm going to shout, couple, shout out to a couple of people who have been listening to our show lately, like uh, uh, Jerry, who I see him in wrestling shows around here. And I want to shout out to Mr. Uh, Mike. 
uh, AK to do the Dodger hat. I was giving a shout out to him too. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you? Why did you AKA him? Because <laughs> that's how we knew him at first. Is the guy with the Dodger hat. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Nathan too for listening. Uh, Nathan, but, uh, yes, Nathan. We'll see you at um in Vegas. Hope you hopefully you win on something there. Dude. And, and and have an advice, dude. If you do win something, buy a gun, please, because you don't know the mafia could be going after you, man. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to uh, him. Advice, dude. man. He's some. He's out of town, you know, and you know and that's how Vegas rolls. It's Sin City. Come on. You're tripping. <laughs> but uh, we are out we'll and we will. We got we got a lot to talk about Friday. Friday is going to be a big show, so you guys do not want to miss it. There's going to be a lot to talk about. I I can't wait to talk about one certain guy who is coming to Alpha One Wrestling and AIW, and I think you guys might know who that is. Talking about uh, is it who I think it is? Because I Steve Carino was going there. Yeah, it's your sim. I I want to I can't wait to talk about that. I'm going to talk about it more in depth Friday. I love great. And maybe we could talk about the new Japan show. Cause I, cause I saw one of them. Yes, yeah, big, big show Friday. It's a can't miss episode, so be sure to tune in. For sure. All right. Until Friday, we out. Peace. We we will rise.